The second half of the NFL season is officially here, and the second half of the NFL season is when fading the public usually starts to work its best. I've got five public sides this week and also three additional public dog leans. Eight games broken down for you for this Sunday, November the 10th, coming up free here in this video. Hi, this is Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com, right back here on Wager Talk TV, and let's get right to it. It's a heavy public card, and not a surprise, after that incredible 18-6 and six public run in the month of October, came back down to earth a bit, went 3-3 three and three last week, but I want to point a couple things out to you. Uh, the public, although they went 3-3, three and three, all three of their point spread covers came by less than a field goal, which means uh, that line value is starting to diminish, and two of the three games in which they lost the team won outright but failed to cover due to an inflated point spread. So very close to going 5-1, and 6-0 and last week, fading the public. And I think that's a good indication going forward that we are going to start to cash. And saw something else very interesting. I thought of all you public viewers here, uh, fade the public video viewers, that is. Uh, DraftKings reported a loss for the last quarter, publicly traded DraftKings. And they claimed the big reason was because the NFL, the public, crushed it in the NFL. Man. If that's not ever the buy sign to maybe start fading the public here over the next few weeks, I don't know what is. I do expect them to come back down to earth, and maybe it will be this week. All right, let's look at the five most public sides. All five are favorites. Four of the five are actually road favorites here in Week 10. And we'll go down in rotation order. All five of these are pretty equally public. They're all pretty public plays here. Uh, at 1 o'clock Eastern, the Buffalo Bills minus four at Indianapolis. Um, not a surprise the public is on the Bills here. They're an offensive juggernaut this year. They've looked really good, 7-2 straight up. And, of course, the Colts are now starting Joe Flacco over the youngster. 39-year-old Joe Flacco over the youngster, Richardson. Flacco still got a good 94 QB rating, seven touchdowns, two interceptions this season in five games. But he didn't look too good on Sunday night at Minnesota, had his worst start of the season. Uh, we'll see if he can bounce back. I do think Minnesota can put up some points. Or, I sorry, Indianapolis can put up some points here, but the problem is I'm not sure they can slow down Buffalo. Uh, Bill should be able to score at will in this game, so um, hard to really find a catalyst here, especially at such a short number, minus four. Uh, Buffalo should be able to put up a lot of points. Bill's team total over might be worth a look, actually, in this game. All right, next game, also at 1 o'clock Eastern, the Minnesota Vikings, minus 6.5 to 7, a very public side. Now, shop around. If you're going to fade them here with the Jags, uh, currently 6.5 and in some spots. Others have plus 7. And it's not a surprise the public is on Minnesota as um, Trevor Lawrence is out most likely with an injury, which means Mac Jones, the former Patriot quarterback, is the likely starter this week. They did pick up, by the way, Bethard uh, once again, C.J. Bethard as a backup, but Mac Jones expected to get the start. You know, when fading the public and playing some of these ugly teams, we always look for a catalyst. Maybe Mac Jones is that catalyst. I don't think so. Trevor Lawrence is a better quarterback, and this is not a good sign for the 2-7 and seven Jags. And this game is very similar to that Buffalo game, as once again, I just don't see Jacksonville slowing down this potent Minnesota offense. Uh, so once again, team total might be worth a look. Vikings team total over could be in play here, as they should be able to score plenty of a points and get in the high 28-30 to 30 point range in this game. But once again, the public is fading Jacksonville with the backup quarterback and on the Minnesota Vikings. Vikings snap that two-game losing streak, of course, on Sunday night football against those Colts, and they do have a trip at Tennessee next week, so not much of a look ahead, even though they're coming off the Sunday night win. All right, next public play is also 1 o'clock Eastern, and another road favorite. We'll keep the theme going here, and that's the Atlanta Falcons minus the 3.5 points against the Saints on the road. Um, and Once again, not a surprise the public is fading the Saints. Uh, they just lost to the Carolina Panthers last week. They're now 2-7 and seven straight up on the season. It's been a total train wreck of a season. And they have also gone 0-7 straight up after the 2-0 start. Don't forget, they started the season 2-0 straight up and against the spread. And they have now gone 0-7 straight up, 1-6 against the number since mid-September over the past two months. However, there is a catalyst in this game. That's what we always look for, right, if we're going to play one of these ugly dogs. And that's the coaching change. Uh, Saints fired their head coach. Uh, now they have the uh, interim coach. He's made some changes on the defensive staff as well. Is that enough to get a competitive game out of the Saints? We shall see. I mean, Derek Carr is still a capable quarterback. Problem for New Orleans is they just haven't been able to stop anybody this season. And um, they're giving up 6.2 yards per play against teams that average just 5.6. And Atlanta has been a good offensive team, especially throwing the ball for 7.5 yards per pass attempt. So, Common theme with these first three road favorites is the public is on them. They're fading bad teams as home dogs. And in all three spots, you don't really see 
those ugly home dogs being able to stop the opponent. So you would think Atlanta can probably put up some points in this one once again. But the Saints do have that coaching change, and sometimes that does spark a team and could be enough of a catalyst this week. Next game now is on the late card at 4 o'clock Eastern. Public is on the L.A. Chargers. Chargers minus the 7.5 points against the Texans. And something I want to point out in these other games, in fact, for these five public games I'm giving you, the line is a couple points higher than the look-ahead line just a week ago. Uh, Buffalo was four. That hasn't changed. Um, the Minnesota-Jacksonville look ahead line was around four. Now with Lawrence out at six and a half, seven, so almost a field goal higher there. Uh, the Atlanta line was as low as minus one last week. Now it's three and a half. And in this case, the Charger look ahead line was around six and a half, seven. Now it's seven and a half. And obviously that's a very key number that we have crossed over. Hard for me to make a case, though, for the Titans. They're a miserable team, two and six straight up. But if we're looking for a catalyst, they do expect to have Will Levis back at quarterback, the initial starter this season. Now, Levis isn't very good, but once again, maybe that's a catalyst to give them a spark here. And if you're going to play an ugly dog, you want to at least look for something to have changed. And we do have that with the Saints, as I mentioned, with the court's coaching change. Uh, we have that with the Jags, with Mac Jones. Not sure that's a positive. You never know. If it was the NBA, it might be a positive. seems like all the NBA teams win and cover when they have backups in there. And now Will Levis, the former starter, is back in for the Titans. So that is the one change here, uh, but pretty hard to make a case for him otherwise. Uh, Chargers, meanwhile, um, you know they were actually a pretty public team early in the season with Harbaugh back at the helm in the NFL. Um, the public kind of jumped ship, but they've been on them recently, and for good reason. They've gone 3-1 and one straight up in ATS their last four games. And the Chargers have really taken care of the ball this year. They have no turnovers in five of their last six games, and in six of their eight games this season, they have not turned the ball over. Some of that is good fortune, but obviously Herbert's a good quarterback, veteran quarterback that's not going to throw a lot of picks. Uh, meanwhile, the Titans have had the turnover edge in just one game all season, and that happened to be last week, the overtime win against the Patriots. But once again, uh, they have not been fortunate with turnovers in the first seven games until last week. So if you do believe turnovers kind of equal out as the season goes on, that's another contrary indicator that could give you a little bit of ammunition to pull the trigger with the Titans. And as I mentioned, six and a half, seven was the look ahead. Now it's seven and a half. So we do have a new quarterback. Turnover stuff should even out a little bit and adjusted line value. That's about all I can give you, though, on the Titans. They're a pretty miserable team, though, otherwise. All right, the fifth fade the public play is your late night game at 8.20 Eastern Sunday night on NBC. And I actually did a standalone solo video, a deep dive into the Lions and Texans. So be sure to check that out for more information here on Wager Talk TV. And one of the things I mentioned in that video is there's only two teams in the NFL that have a winning straight-up record but a losing point spread record, the Texans and the other one is the Green Bay Packers. Now, not a surprise with the Texans, because after finishing second to worst in the NFL two years ago, they made the playoffs last year, and I did think they would be overvalued coming into this season, and I think that's been the case. Uh, six and three straight up start, but just three and five against the number. But now it looks like maybe we're starting to get some of that value back. Another situation, and by the way, the public is on the Detroit Lions here as a road favorite Sunday night. Another situation where the look-ahead line last week was two and a half, now the game line is three and a half and climbing higher. Maybe you see some fours by kickoff Sunday night with the public backing the road favorite. So I do like the Texans in this situation. And as opposed to these other four games we've talked about, this is one case where we're actually getting a decent team by fading the public. And as you know, my favorite subset with fading the public is public dogs. And that's because it's fading public dogs because public's usually on favorites. And we usually get a quality team when we're fading a public dog. This is not technically a public dog because Detroit's a road favorite, but the Texans are a quality team, first place in their division. So of the five games I mentioned here, I think I'd be most comfortable fading the public with this Sunday nighter on the Houston Texans. And they do have a substantial defensive edge. They qualify as a good defensive dog in this game. Detroit's excellent offensively, no question about it, but they're giving up almost six yards per play this year and six and a half yards per pass. Texans, meanwhile, giving up just 4.7 yards per play at home and just 5.1 yards per play in all games this season, including just 5.4 yards per pass. They've actually statistically had one of the best pass defenses in the NFL this season. Now, I know it's scary to fade Dan Campbell and company. What is it? I think 44-17 and 17 the last four and a half years since he became a head coach against the spread. But once again, that's all factored in here, and I do think this line is too high. It was two and a half a week ago. Now it's three and a half, and that's one of the reasons fading the public in November, December works best of the year. This is the best time of the year, rather, to fade the public because of that adjusted line. Van, I just mentioned last week, 
Two of the three games the Pelicans missed were situations where a team won but failed to cover. Could Detroit win this by exactly three? I think it is likely about an 8 to 9% chance, actually, the Lions win by exactly three. So this line going from 2.5 to 3.5 has provided some value now with the home dog Sunday night. I think this is a spot where we can look to fade the public. All right, those are your five official public sides for this week 10 in the NFL. Bills, Vikings, and Falcons on the early card, Chargers late card, and then the Lions on Sunday night. Going to give you three additional public leans on some dogs, some public dog leans in just a moment. Triple red flag alert. But first, I want to let you know, if you want my official best bets, we don't just blindly fade the public. Uh, If you're new to this video, the premise is quite simple. When the public is heavy on one side, the line is usually a little inflated. And long term, fading these situations will make you money. But you got to use this as a filter. I'm giving you eight games in this video. Um, So you have to filter down. If you're looking at one of them, it might be enough to make it a play. If you're on the other side, maybe you just kind of leave it off your card. That's how I use this public information, and that's how I derive my best bets. But I use about 30 other factors in the NFL as well. If you like my official best bets for this Sunday in pro football, Saturday college football, of course, daily college and pro basketball best bets, now is a great time to be an all-sports, all-access subscriber. And the price is right this weekend, Bob Barker, because you can get three days and nights for just $49. That's right. Three-day sampler is normally 69 but it's just 49 with promo code STEVE3. Steve, the number three. It's that simple. You get three days and nights of all sports. Now, if you're ready to take a serious long-term investment approach and win consistently long-term like all my smart, intelligent clients have done for decades, then the one-year all-access with promo code SM365 is by far the best value. Gets it down to about a dollar per play for every football, basketball, college and pro, baseball best bet for the next 365 days and nights. I know baseball just finished, but we won almost 100 units this year in baseball. It's right around the corner. It's only, what, four or five months away. College and pro hoops just started. Last three years alone in the NBA, just in the NBA, I'm up over 200 units. College hoops was ranked number one a couple years ago as well. And, of course, college and pro football is still here. Once again, SM365 gets it down to about a dollar per day with an instant $811 discount. Or if you want to try out something smaller, try that three-day sampler for just 49 with promo code Steve3. If you're football only, some of you want football only, nothing wrong with that. I do have instant $50 discounts on the rest of the college and pro seasons. You can get them both and save up to $100 with promo code FBALL50. Now look, you don't have to memorize the promos or the special offers. They're all listed on my page right now with those special promo codes. Take your time, go there, check them out, see which one works best for you. But now, no matter which package you choose, you get the exact same best bets I'm personally using each day. It's quite simple. I've done this now for 29 consecutive years as a full-time, profitable, professional handicapper. And if I have a play, my clients get it as well. And I'm really selective. Maybe one to three plays per day on average, all sports. And that selectivity pays off. In fact, after just the first 10 months this year, we were up over 170 units on best bets. And there's still nearly two more months to go this calendar year in 2025, right around the corner. Don't forget also on my page, you can check out the previous 20 best bets. I roll and recap every day of all my best bets that go out to my clients. You can click on any of them as well to read the analysis afterwards to see how I do things, how I handicap games. And while you're liking these free play videos I do during the week, don't forget I post bonus free plays on my page with analysis. Basketball during the week, college and pro football free plays on the weekend. So go there right now. It's all free for you. The previous best bets, you can read up on them. You can check out those promo codes. And also, you can see a free play. Check it out. Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. And hey, get there quicker with shortcut wt.buzz slash sm. All right, on the way out here, I wanted to give you three additional public underdog leans. There were no official public dogs this week, but there were three games that had some sentiment. I'm going to treat all these three as additional public leans. Uh, We'll go down in schedule order. The first one's at 930 Eastern, your Munich-Germany game. Der Giants against Der Panthers. I can't speak German. I'm not going to even try. Hey, if you speak German, comment below. Let me know how you say Giants and Panthers in German. Don't cheat. Don't use Google. We could all do that. I want real German speakers to do it. But on a serious note, the public is on the Panthers. How do you say wow in German? Because that is something we didn't think we'd see. But hey, do the Giants deserve to be laying six and a half points against anybody? Public obviously doesn't think so. And of course, the Panthers did cash last week. Um, for only the second time this season, straight up and against the spread. Both of these teams are 2-7 and seven straight up. So yeah, I know the Panthers are terrible. But Giants aren't much better. Public likes the Panthers plus 6.5. I will say last week they faded the Giants, was the most faded team in the NFL. And of course, the public won again with not my Washington Commanders, 
Um, so not a surprise to see them fading the Giants here. I'm not sure how much they're really on the public is really on Carolina. I just think nobody wants anything to do with the Giants laying six and a half. By the way, last week was one of those games in which the public barely covered, though. They won by five as a four-point favorite with Washington, and the Giants missed two two-point conversions late in that game. Otherwise, they do cover, and they didn't play too bad. Uh, these Germany games are always random. I often stay away from them because of the early start, the travel. Uh, but wanted to let you know the Panthers look like the most public dog uh, this week, and that is an early game for you Sunday at 9.30 a.m. Eastern on NFL Network, I believe. All right, two more public dog leans at 1 o'clock Eastern, the Denver Broncos. You know, last week I mentioned on the video I really liked Baltimore, and I thought that was a good fade the public spot. And the Ravens pulled away and just crushed them 41-10 to there, mainly in the second half. And one of the things I said about Denver is when they get behind, they don't throw the ball well. Bo Nix, they have a great defense this year, but Bo Nix is still very suspect, especially against better teams. I know Baltimore's past defense hadn't been much this year, but Nix still didn't do much last week. And now he's facing a very good Kansas City defense. Question becomes, though, can Kansas City do enough to cover? Uh, public faded them last week with the Buccaneers on Monday Night Football. Tampa almost won that game outright. Of course, they covered even in overtime. And the public got burnt with Denver last week, as I mentioned. Uh, but they're coming right back with them here. I think this is a little bit of a fate of Kansas City laying the big number as they have been playing some close games recently. Now, they remain undefeated, but you look at some of their wins this year. 7, 1, 5, 7, 10, 7, 6, and a 13-point win. They've only gotten two of those games by more than seven points this year. I think that's the main reason we see the public on Denver here. Um, once again, public fate was on Denver last week. It did not work out. We'll see if it works out this week. But the Broncos at 1 o'clock Eastern, plus the 7.5 to plus 8, are, is getting some public sentiment as well. And the finally public dog lean is also at 1 o'clock Eastern, and that is those Tampa Bay Buccaneers that I just referenced. Public was on them last night on Monday night, uh, last week rather, on Monday night football, and they cashed with them. Almost got the outright win as the game went to overtime, and the public is coming right back with those Buccaneers, despite the fact Tampa has lost three straight in four of their last five. So a little surprising here, but once again, they did cash with them last week. And I think the public just isn't believing in San Francisco this year, and I don't blame them. Uh, this is a team that has not won back-to-back -back games all season, and they're coming off the bye week after beating Dallas in their last game. We'll see how much of a bye, much of the difference the bye makes. The offense has looked pretty good, actually, in two of their last three games. Uh, you recall that Thursday night game back on October 10th, I gave you the over here on the videos for free. I also used it for my clients. In fact, I've gone 7-1 and one this year on those free Thursday night NFL videos. So make sure you're watching uh, the weeknight videos, especially the Thursday night NFL ones. They've done incredibly well. I decided back in week three I was going to give you every Thursday, Sunday, and Monday night video free here on the channel. Uh, often they don't make my best bet card. That San Francisco-Seattle over actually was a client play a few weeks ago. Uh, but once again, it's yet another reason to click subscribe and click that bell for instant alerts. So you know when all those free play weeknight videos go up, including the Thursday night NFL video for next week, which is on a 7-1 run so far this season. But what I wanted to point out was they had over fi uh, 500 yards, or actually almost 500 yards, about 483 yards against Seattle. And then against Dallas before the bye, they had 470 yards, 469 I think to be exact. So the offense has been getting better. No turnovers in either of those games. They were sloppy against Kansas City. And, of course, I had a best bet on them in that game. Figures, right? They have two monster games on each side, and the one we used them a few weeks ago, they come out flat. But then again, Kansas City, a much better defensive team. But San Francisco still had three turnovers in that game. If they can limit the turnovers, they could be tough because the three games in which they haven't had turnovers this year have been three of their four wins straight up and against the spread. So it's pretty simple. Don't turn the ball over and San Francisco does well. Um, so we'll see how this one plays out, but the public is on Tampa as a dog lean here at 1 o'clock Eastern. All right, those are your three public dog leans, Panthers, Buccane uh, Broncos, and Buccaneers. Whew, eight games here for you for Sunday, November the 10th, week 10 of the NFL. Hey, I hope you found it useful. If you did on the way out, do me a couple favors. Comment below, because first of all, I do truly read the comments, and second of all, I love the support, and I love the insight. You know, some of those Thursday night videos, we gave you another free winner this Thursday with the over in the Baltimore Cincy game, but it did start a little slow, and some of you had commented during the week, we're going to wait and bet in game because those Thursday night games are a bit random sometimes and sluggish at the start. I thought that was a great tip, and yet one of the reasons I love all the comments and the insight, because I really honestly believe we have the sharpest and smartest sports betting viewers right here on Wager Talk TV. So comment below. Let me know if you're liking these free play videos, and I will keep them coming. And we have basketball here now as well. I'll start doing some NBA and college hoop videos. 
Also, what NFL plays do you like this week? Where do you agree or disagree? Where are you playing or fading with the public here in Week 10? And include some player props. I love the player props. A lot of you do very well with them. Hey, so share them with some others here as well in the comments below. Thumbs up, like is also greatly appreciated. Boom. Took one second. You just did it. I saw it. Appreciate it, man. Hit that thumbs up, like. And don't forget, subscribe and click the bell for instant alerts. You know, in these videos, including my college football top 25, go live every weekend. And the free play solo videos throughout the week I do on a daily basis. Click that bell when you subscribe for instant alerts. And don't forget, once again, if this is a great time to be an all sports client, college and pro football, college and pro basketball, four major sports going. The one year all access is a great investment choice. Works out to about a dollar per play, SM365. But if you want to try something smaller this weekend, you get a three day sampler for just $49 when you use promo code Steve3. Steve, the number three. Don't have to memorize the promo codes or worry about the spelling. They're listed on my homepage right now with details. Also, you can see a daily free play. Check out that bonus free play right now on my page as well. Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. Hey, get there quicker with shortcut wt.buzz slash sm. And finally, don't forget to follow me on social media at Steve Merrill. You know the deal. Two R's, one L. At Steve Merrill. Two R's, one L. At Steve Merrill on X and Instagram. And stay tuned here to Wager Talk TV. There's some more great free betting content coming up next.